Greetings and welcome, friends. We're just doing a little geometer sketchpad activity. You can find this activity in uh, section 4.1 of your Big Ideas Geometry textbook. This is exploration one. We're going to actually even modify it a little bit beyond that. So here I am in geometer sketchpad. I've selected the segment tool. Uh, I'm not interested in working with rays or lines. And we're each going to draw our own arbitrary triangle, right? Uh, yeah, you can draw it as, as ridiculous as you want. And when you connect your segments, you want them to snap. Notice that they snap from one to the other. And notice that I can actually now like drag this around, manipulate it, and it maintains its triangulacity, which I don't know, uh, Mr. O'Donnell, if you knew that word, but that is, it is now. Uh, let's see, let's also label this. So I'm gonna use the text tool. I click on that and now, oh, I've got like a little finger here and I'm gonna click on the points, not the lines, and label this A, B, and C. All right, so now I've got myself a little triangle. Now what they were going to have us do was uh, create a triangle and then copy the triangle and translate or slide, same thing, uh, it to form a new figure called an image uh, labeled right triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, like so. So that is a way that I can do that. Uh, so if I select my arrow tool, my selector, and kind of drag a box, make sure everything's highlighted, I'm going to hit uh, Control C to copy. You can also go up to uh, Edit and Copy as such. And oh, it's it's yelling at me because I'm in preview mode. Just be cool, friends. Just be cool. Uh, and paste. And notice I get a, a new triangle like so, and I can kind of drag this around and have it land in a different location. Let's see, so I don't know if you guys have been able to do something similar to that, like so. No, you selected the whole thing. All right, there you go. And now drag it somewhat away from your original so that way they are somewhat unique. Now I have a feeling, yeah, look at this. These triangles are not mapped to each other. Right? Uh, Notice, as I translate it, let me ask you this question. Do you think these triangles are the same, have the same angles when I made a copy of it? Malik, do you think these triangles have the same angles when I made a copy of it? Yeah, like even though I moved it over here, it's still got the same angles. Uh, Haley, do you think these triangles have the same side lengths? Even though I made a copy, it looks like they all still line up, even just because I move it doesn't mean it changed. Yeah, so these triangles are still congruent to one another. So that's, that's one of the ways the book was going to have you do this. But let's, uh, let's undo, all right? Let's go back and let's modify this lesson. So let's go to undo. I can also hit control Z if I want to undo a few things. Back to just when I had one triangle, okay? Just to when I had one triangle. All right, and now I'm, what I'm going to do is Let's see, graph, go to graph, and let's go to grid form, and go to square grid. I'll, I'll let it hang out there for a minute so you guys can catch up. We're gonna make, make a grid. All right, you with me? And I click it, and hey, look at that. I've got like a coordinate plane and such. You are not able to go to graph, grid form, and square grid? What we're going to do now is construct a new segment. All right, so I go to my segment tool on the left, and I'm gonna make a segment that starts at the origin and just drag it out, I don't know, somewhere in first quadrant for right now, something like that. Did you make, you guys with me for making a segment? It's okay if your triangle is not in one of the quadrants, you can have, Kind of like a triangle all over the place it could be like that right it could be where, wherever all right so we're making a segment that is has one of its endpoints snapped to the origin all right now i want to get two things from this segment click on the segment itself the blue part not not the endpoints although that actually could have worked as well and go to measure and hit length all right, and I've got the length up there. I think there's a way that I can um, 
yeah, there I made, made it a little larger there. So, so notice I've got the, oh, a real-time readout of the length of this segment over here. You guys with me? You got that? Mm -hmm. All right. And I also want to measure its angle, which I'm going to kind of use this point here, which is actually, notice, whoa, that's crazy. I'm like zooming into the universe here. That changes the scale of the axis, uh, right? Sort of thing like that. And it's a square grid, so notice it actually changed both of them at the same rate. Uh, and what I'm going to do, selection tool, select my little arrow, deselect any everything, just click in blank space for a minute. And we're going to find out the angle of uh, that this line forms with the positive x axis. All right, so I'm going to click that point. I think this will work. We'll see. Click point G and click the point H, not the letter H. In that order, all right? The, the one at the origin has to be the middle one that I selected. Hit measure and angle. And now I've got an angle, all right? And notice when I drag it around. Now this one's a little bit interesting uh, because it actually stays positive um, when I'm down here, but I'm not too worried about that. This will still be a good enough example. Now, all right, I've got that. What I want us to do is to now, we're going to translate or slide our original triangle in this direction and by that angle, okay? So what we're going to need to do, deselect everything if you haven't, all right, and select just the triangle as best you can. Notice if I draw that box, I'm actually accidentally selecting these. That's okay. I can click on them to deselect. Make sure your axis is not selected. You could also, if your triangle was like over everything, you could just click on everything uh, one at a time, and that's fine. Click, click, click. Make sure you got three sides, three points. Now we get a triangle. And watch, the, watch this. I'm going to go to Transform. And we're going to go to Translate. And I'm actually, I can pick a distance, and I can pick an angle. But we're actually going to use this marked distance and marked angle, which right now it's not giving me the option. But if I click up here on my measurements, uh -huh. so now it's a marked distance, which is the distance from G to H, and click on this angle, and it's moving by that angle, like so. You guys with me so far? We're all going to be in, it's, yours is going to look a little different than mine, and now we'll just hit translate and finish this up. Okay. Now that that's selected, let's actually change that color because you guys like, I like using different colors here. If you go to display and color, you can, I don't know, change your triangle to a different color. Maybe I'll even like select, deselect everything, just select my HG segment, go to display. We can make it a, a dashed line if we want. We could change that color, display color. I don't know, maybe, maybe this purple. I'm feeling, yeah. And now watch this. If I click on H and drag it around, notice wherever I drag it, it's changing the distance and the angle, and it's, move, it's still moving that triangle by that original amount. If I modify the triangle, check this out, all right? The triangle is still, and its image, the image is the orange one, are still congruent. Those are still gonna be the same side, same angles. Uh, and they're just in a new position that have been moved in a direction according to the angle and a distance according to this, uh, this segment length. Now, the one glitch that I've got on this is if I make my angle go below the axis, it's not actually moving in that direction anymore because I've got a positive angle measurement. But for like at least like uh, 180 degrees, it worked for me. Uh, I'd have to modify this a little bit to get it to work. But yeah, so you can notice that as you drag it around, uh, your image and pre-image are still congruent and they're just simply moved with respect to this distance and that angle. Now let's actually go and label our new triangle. So if I hit the text tool and I'm gonna label it, try to map A to A. So let's click on this new A point first. What? Would you look at that? It's got like a little apostrophe or something. Actually, that's, that's not an apostrophe. What's that, a prime mark, I guess? What's it, what's it referred to for functions, Mr. O'Donnell? I don't know, is there a name for it? Yeah, I would just call it A prime, but I was just thinking of like what symbol that is as far as text. Yeah, but either way, 
Uh, these would be referred to as A prime, B prime, and C prime. These are the image after the transformation took place. And uh, they are, and then the pre-image was triangle A, B, C. And so if I deselect everything, I can still kind of move it around. If I modify A, B, C, right, it's still going to be uh, the same size, same angles. That's, what's, that's what we call congruent, right, when things are the same size and angle. Well, and then it behaves a little funny, like bouncing for me like that. So, so I just wanted to give you an idea of what a, a translation is. It's moving something in a particular direction at a particular distance. And our image, our new image, and the pre-image, what we started with, will maintain congruence. All right, thanks for watching, Internet friends. Bye-bye.